Hi and welcome back to the Citizen Channel and continuing our look at the trial of Benjamin Mendy at Chester Crown Court and this is day five, Friday the 19th of August 2022. Please, if you are new to the channel, please push that subscribe button. It's mainly about City and all the good stuff, but uh, yeah, something I'm interested in, the Benjamin Mendy case and a lot of people out there are, so I thought I'd do this little daily vlog as well while the case is going on it could be going on for 15 weeks so it's going to be a, a bit of a long haul but uh, thanks for joining me for this so please push that subscribe button please give us a thumbs up please. thumbs up guys not not for what's going on but just, just for me you make a, an old city fan very happy right let's talk about day five uh, the background of course a 28 year old mendy's been charged with eight counts of rape one count of sexual assault and one of attempted rape allegations relate to seven women Charges span between October 2018 and August 2021. Mr. Mendy's co defendant, Louis Saha Maturi, is 41, is also standing trial, accused of eight counts of rape, four counts of sexual assault related to eight alleged victims. Both men, of course, deny all the charges against them, and Judge Stephen Everett resides. And my thanks again to the Manchester Evening News website for. Uh, is uh, this little uh, sort of timeline they do on the court proceedings, which uh, I make use of, and uh, my thanks to them. Right, 10.55am, jurors were back in court, and Mr Mendy's defence barrister, Eleanor Laws QC, continued to cross-examine woman two. Manchester City defenders accused of raping the woman at his home near Presbury Cheshire in October 2020. Ms Laws is asking the woman about a message her friend sent her the following morning. In the message, the court is told that the friend informs woman two that another friend has sex with Mr Mendy on the evening of the alleged rape. The woman says she assumed she was referring to another man who her friend has spent quite a lot of time with. She claims it was not until later that she became aware that her friend has sex with Mr Mendy. Ms Laws asked the woman if she is someone who always tries to tell the truth. Absolutely, the witness replies. Ms Laws then asked about a message she sent to another friend the day after the alleged rape in which she disclosed that she had been sexually assaulted by someone. In the message, she said she did not know the name of the person she believed to be responsible, but they were French and a footballer for Man City. Mr Mendy's barrister suggests she knew who he was by then, as an, as an analysis of her phone showed she had made a Google search of his name shortly after the alleged incident. The woman says the following date was a whirlwind, adding, at the time, I believe I did not know. Following the alleged rape, jurors are told that two of women two's friends contacted Louis Sahart Maturi to say they were not happy with Mr Mendy and told him to have a word with him. When they were told the woman what they had done, Ms Laws accuses her of telling her friends not to speak to Mr Maturi about her again. Ms Laws asked woman too, is that because you had started to lie and exaggerate to your friends about what happened with Mr Mendy? The witness replies, no, absolutely not. Ms Laws then asked the witness about her claim that Benjamin Mendy confiscated her phone, phone before looking through explicit pictures of her on Snapchat. She says the images were in the password protected my eyes only section of the app. The QC suggests to the woman that she must have given Mr Mendy her password in order for him to access the pictures. For Mr Mendy to have seen those explicit photos of you, somehow that password needs to be put in there, she says. There are two options. You either want to show him the images of yourself. The other, the other is you are looking at those images of yourself and he happened to come over and look at them, which would not make any sense. The woman says she entered her password to show Mr Mendy that she had not taken any pictures of his home. At 12.01pm there was a short break. At 12.34pm the jury returned. Ms Law says that in the weeks following the alleged rape, the woman received love, support and attention from friends. By the time you got to early November, you had persuaded yourself you were really the victim in all this, Ms Law's alleges. The witness replies, I did not need to persuade myself. I'm absolutely certain what happened. I did not consent at any point. The woman tells the court that in the weeks following the alleged rape, she felt so bad and just wanted my life to end. She eventually reported what had happened to police on November the 2nd, several weeks after attending Mr Mendy's home. She says she was really scared, adding, I just needed to tell someone uh, that that what happened was not okay. I needed to do, to do that for myself. The witness was then asked about her relationship with another woman who accuses Mr Mendy of sexually assaulting her. Ms Laws alleges that the two were in a WhatsApp group together. 
woman who says the other one was a friend of a friend. She says a mutual friend informed her that the woman who had also made allegations to police about Mr. Mendy, which she found shocking. Concluding her cross examination, Elena Laws QC says to the witness, What happened in that room was you were in you were in drink and Mr. Mendy did things you regretted and felt very embarrassed about the next day. Absolutely not, the witness replies. 13 18 pm uh, it was adjourned for lunch. 14 30 pm the trial resumed with Lisa Wilding QC cross examining the witness on behalf of Louis Sahat Maturi. The woman is asked about the moment she alleges Benjamin Mendy took her phone after accusing her of taking pictures inside his house. She says she can't remember if Mr. Maturi was with Mr. Mendy at the time. Ms. Wilding asked the woman about the Snapchat message she received the following morning from Mr. Mendy and Mr. Maturi. The barrister accuses a witness of trying to give the impression that the messages came out of the blue in her evidence. She alleges that Mr. Maturi contacted the woman, contacted the woman after her friends told him they were not happy with Mr. Mendy and told him to have a word with him. You knew full well why you got those messages, says Miss Wilding. Prosecutor Timothy Cray, QC, is now putting questions to the witness. He asks her whether she and Mr. Mendy had any had any one-on-one -on -one conversation while at the bar earlier in the evening. No, she replied. While at the bar, the court is told that Jesse Limgard was also present. Mr. Cray asked the woman about a message she sent to a friend while she was at the bar, which allegedly made reference to bagging a footballer for the winter. She says this was just a joke based on a song named UFO, which features, which features Manchester rapper H. The woman tells the court that her friends were more enthusiastic about going to Mr. Mendy's house than she was. Mr. Cray asked the woman at what point in the evening she thought Mr. Mendy wanted her sexually. I didn't, she said. I didn't have that thought. Mr. Cray asked the woman how scared she was when Mr. Mendy allegedly told her to take her clothes off in his locked bedroom. That's when it just hit me, she says. I'm in a room. I can't get out with somebody I don't know. I remember looking around thinking, what sort of situation am I in? She continues, I just thought, I just thought my only option was to take my clothes off because he promised he would not touch me. I thought maybe he just wanted to look at me. The woman is being asked about why she decided to make the allegation of rape against Mr. Mendy to police. I just did not want to be here anymore, she said. That's a really scary thought for me to have because I know I have good friends and a good job, but I could not carry on not being honest. I thought to myself, I go, I just and I just be heard because I was not heard on that night. If someone just listens and it's out of and it's out of me, then I can try to carry on. I did not want my life uh, life to live my life. I wanted to pretty much not be here anymore. I don't want to do that to my family or my sister. At 3.48 p.m. the jury finished hearing evidence for the day and of course proceedings will continue on Monday morning the 22nd of August. That'll be day six guys. I'll be back then. Please tune in. Let me know your comments. Let me know your feelings. It's great to hear from you and please until we meet again. Oh, that's one thing don't I? Please stay safe everyone. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.